Hey everyone, this is Ed Kime, CEO over at Quantia, and welcome to week five of the Quantia Challenge. It's May 29th, 2015, a little bit after 1 p.m. Eastern, and let's dig into this week's portfolio and trades. You'll notice this week we've changed the way we've laid out the portfolio a bit. We're actually consolidating into the specific positions we have for each stock, rather than just showing the list of options. And we've also made a couple changes to some of the pricing data that we're showing. So just walking through this quickly, we've got the underlying, which just shows what the stock is. The advice, which is whether it was the bull or the bear of the day uh, from Zacks. We've got the underlying, which is indicating how it's performed since the call was made uh, or since we opened the position on that day. So in this particular case, for example, you'll see uh, Las Vegas Sands that was bearish and it went down one and a half percent. So that's why it's green here, because uh, the green indicates when it went in the direction of the advice and the red indicates when it's working against the advice so far. The position is the specific position that we opened as well as we have the expiration here, which indicates either when the trade expires or whether it's already been expired or closed. And then finally, the performance. Now, for all the closed trades, the performance is the final performance as to what we sold out for. Now, this could be whether we sell the position or whether we let it expire because all the trades are out of the money or all the options. Uh, for the performance for the rest of these, we're actually using a feature from Quantia here. And I'm going to switch over real quick to give you an idea. Uh, every time you watch a trade in Quantia now, we keep track of how that trade has performed since you were watching it. So we're using market open data all the time. So if we go into all these specific ones, we can see that uh, the market open would be if you were going to buy any of the, if you're buying the asks and you're selling uh, for the bids. So it's, it's a position that obviously favors uh, the other side of the trade. And when we open in these positions, which is a, a pure market open, as we've been doing for all the Quantia challenge positions, we're comparing apples to apples. So this 65% is saying if you were to do a market open right now, this is where you would be, as opposed to it would have been less expensive or significantly less expensive to open this back then. And you can see 65% here. Um, some of these trades are really working in our favor. There's been huge jumps uh, depending on the pricing. And of course, if we jump back into the slides, you can get an idea for how these uh, trades have been performing. So in the case of, for example, this Las Vegas Sands one, when we sold, we made this profit. We booked it. Uh, the other hand, on the other side with Cirrus, which expires today, um, right now we're up this much. But when we go to sell out of the position, if it doesn't expire out of the money, um, what we will have to do is we, we will take a bit of a hit on the market trade or the limit trade used to close this position out. So this is sort of a theoretical high, and we wouldn't actually get that high. But it's important to understand this is apples to apples for you to see how the trades are doing compared to when we open them. So that's kind of a key thing to keep in mind. Now, some of the requests we've gotten so far have been for us to keep some benchmarks up so people can understand how we're performing against the market in general. And so we've got just some idea here. You've got the S&P, Dow, and NASDAQ all less, up less than 1%. Uh, you know, it's been May, and May is May, so this is actually not too bad. Now, if we were to take a long short portfolio of all the positions we have, where we took the cost basis or the investment basis for the positions we have in each of those stocks, and instead of buying a bullish or bearish trade, we went and we bought or sold the stock short, we would be at, at a loss of 20 basis points right now, um, which factors in, you know, really just the, the idea if we were to take those and then close those positions today. And so using the last pricing, you know, we're down a little bit on long short if we did that. However, because we're trading with options and we're being, uh, you know, we're a little more leveraged and we also have been a little more, less aggressive on some of our uh, break even points, we've actually been able to show a, a gain of six and a half percent on a cash last basis. So this is an important notion that we've been using so far, which is the cash and last. However, um, this is not necessarily the right way to do performance uh, because the last prices for options don't change that often. It's really the bids and the asks you want to care about. So if what we did instead is we took our market open positions that we were using on the last slide and we were to compare market open to market open in addition to cash. What we've actually seen so far is a portfolio performance of theoretically upwards of 14.6%. Now, if we were going to sell out of all these positions, we would not retain that number as high as it is. But this is where the, the positions would be if we had to compare them with opening them fresh today versus when we open them back when we open them. So even though this number is a bit high, uh, it is not inaccurate to say that we are up at least 10% at this point on our, on our portfolio. So we're pretty proud of that, and uh, we're going to keep going. We're about at the halfway mark. And so we're going to keep updating this uh, each week to see if we can do even better. 
Now let's dig into the bull of the day from Zax, which is Comscore. They were recently trading at around 5650, and they are known as the global leader in measuring the digital world. Uh, this is a, a key company in, in the internet space. Uh, they've had a lot of success, and they've shown over the last eight quarters that they can consistently meet or beat the Zacks consensus earnings and revenue guidance. Uh, these are the those are the consensus numbers that come together from all the analysts in the industry that are followed, and uh, it. it just shows that they've been really crushing it that the four quarter average positive earnings surprise has been over 500 uh, percent which is incredible and so this is a company that's just been uh, setting it on fire and so it's really a great opportunity for us to get out there and place an aggressive bullish trade so let's pick up where we left off in Quantia and see if we can find a good trade for Comscore now we're going to be bearish on the stock and so if we take a look at the overview page we can see that uh, currently, the implied volatility through the June expiration, which is the first chance we have to play it, uh, is pretty is, is pretty low um, relative to the the growth in implied volatility down the road. So right now at this uh, about 20 day mark, we'll just go ahead and we'll select that. Uh, we really don't have a lot of options on how we're going to play this in terms of the date. I'm going to reset our settings here so we can get a view for uh, the stock at a neutral level. Now. We can see here immediately that there's not a lot going on. If I kind of get rid of the skew and I get rid of the volume, uh, we could see with the volume numbers actually there's really just not a lot of trading going on for Comscore options today. Very limited open interest. We can see that at about what looks like the 55 mark, um, there's there's some open interest, and about uh, maybe one eighth of that is at the 50 mark, and there's only probably one put that's out there, or at least virtually no puts that are being that are being put there. The put break even is a little bit low um, compared to the call break even, so that just indicates that uh, the price that you would need to get into in order to make this profitable trade is significantly lower than the amount of movement upward. So let's take a look if we were going to be moderately bullish on the stock, and you can see we're getting up into an area where there's just not a lot of open interest or volume going on. And we can see that there's some long calls, and we're actually going to avoid the long calls just because of our of the liquidity on the on the the options right now isn't very good, and so getting into those positions and then getting out of them later uh, is going to hurt us. So we probably aren't going to go for long calls on this particular on this particular stock. And we can see there's a bull put spread. Uh, if we click through here, it's 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 not a great trade for us. Um, you know the the range the profit probability is not super high. Uh, the return, while okay, isn't isn't great. We've got a minimum return that's a lot lower. Than we'd like to see. I mean, we could lose half if it falls in. It has to go up so far. It really has to go up to this 5787 mark in order for us to see a profit. Which, while that's only um, you know two points, uh, it is still sh needs to be some significant growth. So anything below that, we're going to start to lose money. So I'm actually going to back out of here and see if we, maybe if we were a little more aggressive on our call. I mean, this is a glowing call from Zax. So if we move up to be very bullish. Um, we're going to see if we can get some better trades in here. And uh, we can see that obviously all we're really changing here is our view on the stock. Um, but we can see like some of these, the potential is just incredible for, for the range. Now, of course, this requires a lot of movement. So if we take a look at this first bull put spread, um, the couple of pieces of information that are key here is, I mean, one, of course, we saw that 186 potential return. I mean, that is if you hit $64. That's 64, from 56 to 64, moving up one seventh of the price of the stock. Uh, pretty substantial. I mean, that 15% growth is unlikely um, for the next few weeks. But at the same time, the break even here for the trade is only 58. So it's really only a few cents higher than, than what we were looking at with the previous trade with a much more significant upside potential. And so since we are kind of limited in the options we're working with here, you can see the chain, everything on the call side's in the money, and there's only one put out of the money. So really, this is the probably the best position we're going to be in. I mean, any of the trades we're going to make here are going to involve uh, buying a put for covering and then selling something out of the money. That's really the, the best play we can make unless we're going to do a long call. So let's just go ahead and, and place this trade. So we're going to click through. We're on the trade of your site now. Select market as we've been doing for the entire duration. Take a look at our preview our price here. So we're looking at a total cost of 952, uh, which is about in line with the total investment we expected. And so we'll go ahead and we'll submit that. And we will give that a second to fill. And there we go. Filled at a credit of 773, which is quite a bit higher than we expected there. So uh, there's probably been some, some movement since our delayed data was there. But 
all the better for us. So let's make the most of it. Now let's take a look at Zach's bear of the day, which is Resolute Forest. They were recently trading at around $11.99, and they make, as you'd expect, forest products. Uh, over recently, they've shown a 6% decline in our average realized prices, and that has driven some of the unfortunate numbers that have come in for the recent consensus estimate changes. Uh, the analysts across the industry have been kind of pushing back a bit, and over the last 30 days, they've seen significant drops in virtually a across the board every earnings and revenue number there are uh, to be shown. Uh, it's, it's the biggest thing for us being on the short term is this Q2 drop from 11 cents a share down to a loss of 9 cents a share. And so that's kind of a significant way for us to, to know that there's uh, some, some challenges coming ahead for the company and to see if we can play that with a bearish trade. Back over in Quantra, we'll enter the symbol for Resolute Forest and search. Uh, and we can get a good view of the overview. We can see that the implied volatility is uh, looks like uh, peaking right around the June 19th expiration and then it's sort of swooping down over the longer run, closer to uh, about 39. We can also see the stock's trading at around $12 a share, uh, which is, uh, in terms of the 52-week range, we're really near the low for that. So uh, as you can see with the stock having taken quite a beating over the last two months, being down uh, almost 30%, uh, we are looking at a stock that is kind of testing the, the lower levels of where where it is. So being bearish at this time is going to be a position that we hope to see a little bit more downside. So if we take a look, um, and we will start off and, and notice uh, by default there's really looks like not really much uh, volume again today in this particular uh, set of options. We'll take a look at the chain and we can see there looks like there's nothing that's really liquid and virtually everything's in the money. So it's going to give us a little bit of challenge here. Um, off the bat, the first thing I'm going to do is say that we're going to lower our investment budget to 500 here. Uh, I have a feeling we're not going to have uh, a clear cut winning trade. So even if we go moderately bearish and apply that, um, the trades that come back as expected, yeah, it's a lot of long put. I mean, even uh, given the limited options here, I mean, there's a long stock trade that shows up better just because of how, how negative a lot of these other trades would perform, um, which is <laughs> really, really unfortunate. Uh, so if we're just looking for a drop here, and the drop, I believe, was about uh, up to 10% drop based on the implied volatility. So that's still a pretty substantial drop to go. Um, we're probably going to end up having to play with the long puts here. I mean, even if we move, even if we try to get a little bit more aggressive on how bearish we are, um, we can see that still puts, I mean, there's a few spreads here, but all the spreads are going to be based around buying this 12 and a half, which uh, is, is cheap, but it's also, you know, in, in theory, pretty, pretty unattainable if the stock's going downward. So I'm going to go back and take a look at just being moderately bearish. And we can see with the long puts we have here, uh, I'm going to just sort by, I think pretty much everything we have is going to have some loss within this range here. So yeah, we're going to keep that where it was. And I'm going to go and take a look and see what our lowest risk is. Uh, and we can see the lowest risk we're dealing with for our forecast range here is this long put where we're buying the 15. Uh, and if we buy the 15, it's 320 a share right now. Uh, that means that we have to come down obviously to the uh, a much lower mark in order to make a profit on that. When you factor in the commissions and so on, we're looking at 11.75 for a break even, which means that really just a one day ticking downward a little bit, and then we start getting into uh, into gain territory. So that's probably the best we're going to do here. Um, this isn't a great a great stock for option trading on today, uh, just based on where the market is. Uh, but I think hopefully, you know, given that uh, the Zach's view is, is significantly negative, if we can see some downward movement over the next three weeks, it, this should this should play out well for us. So let's hope for that. So we're going to go ahead and place the trade. We're going to make it a market order as we've been doing for the day. We'll preview that. And so it comes in at 325 as the total cost plus the commission. That, that'll be good enough. Assuming we can come in about that range. We'll give it a second to fill here. Filled at 320. Good. A little bit cheaper. And so now we are looking at uh, the proud owners of a Resolute Forest put for the June time frame. And so here's a look at our closing portfolio for this trading session. Um, we are going to come back throughout the day and we're going to monitor the Cirrus Logic position since we do need to close that if it's going to be in the money. Uh, but other than that, these positions are going to be what we hold on until next week. And uh, next week, we've got nothing expiring. It looks like everything we've got at this point is going to be June 19th. So 
come on back and join us again next week to take a look at how things are going. Uh, if you've got any questions or feedback, please hit us up at hello at quantia.com or post a comment down in the comment section. Thanks and happy trading.